Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today I have my first updated Sorcerer Tank Guide for you and I really hope you enjoy the new format as what I'm testing out now is giving you a bit of gameplay, running through some of the major strengths and the weaknesses and then following up with the traditional build video so that you really I guess have a sense of how it plays and what it looks like. So first off let's begin with the major strength that I think Sorcerer Tank has at the moment and that is crowd control ability. Right now, the way that Encase as well as Bolt Streak interact make for a really easy way of CCing ads, and it's one of the more enjoyable and memorable parts of playing the Sorcerer Tank. As you're seeing on screen, it can be really easy to choke point ads up with the mobility of Streak, followed by CCing them, stunning them, and keeping them in place. Sorcerers also have decent options for self-sustain, particularly their pet ability, which in my opinion is one of the best self-heals in the game when you compare the efficiency of it with the magicka cost of that ability. In addition to that, there are some good shield options that can be sustained with the use of Dark Deal. And if something tragic like your healer going down happens, there's no problem as you can easily heal yourself back up to full without any worries whatsoever. In addition to that, another benefit of Sorcerer Tank is they have pretty good utility with a range of alts including the gate, as well as some ability as I've mentioned before of Bolt Streak and a few other key class abilities. Another sort of benefit, though I suppose it could be a negative depending on your opinion, is that Sorcerer Tank is quite easy to play. And I believe this is a case because you don't have to use all of your buttons. And that sounds a bit silly, but what I'm saying is one of your abilities is going to be used up by pet regardless of if you swap or not. Meaning there's less active abilities to choose from, which can make it very easy, but also to an extent a little dull. And on that note, into the kind of, I guess, more negative points, that could be a negative. One of the real negatives, I think, of Sorcerer Tank is that it does certainly run into resource sustain issues, especially if you're spamming your abilities a bit much, compared to, say, your Dragon Knight. In addition to that, Sorcerer Tank can be a little bit light on the group support outside of the utility aspects I mentioned, as there is no damage shield that buffs everybody like Igneous Shields. Bone Shield, though, really is the best solution there, and if your allies do synergize, you can make up for that weakness. It's also worth mentioning that while you can make up for the Sorcerer's innate kind of weak resource sustain for using Dark Deal, an amazing sustainability that you see on the screen now, the downside of that ability is it can be dangerous to cast, and in certain fights where there's lots of heavy attacks or hard-hitting spells you want to be blocking or rolling, it can be difficult to get a successful cast off. However, I think with a little bit of practice, you can get it down pat, and certainly when I was first learning Sorcerer Tank, it took me a little bit of time to get comfortable casting it and learning when it was safe to do so. So there you go, that's just a few of the strengths and the weaknesses of a Sorcerer Tank, and I really hope you enjoyed this little bit of a change. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. With that said though, time to dive into the build itself and talk about what makes Sorcerer Tank so great in a bit more detail. Now it is time to get into the specifics of the build. For your convenience, I've divided the remainder of the video into various topics, and if you'd like to skip ahead to a particular part, please check out the timestamps in the description below. With that said, let's get into topic number one, the sets. First off, with the sets we're going to be using Mighty Chudan, Ebon Armory, as well as Alkosh. When it comes to the armor layout, we're using five pieces heavy, one piece is light, and one piece medium. I'm going to quickly now go through the traits and enchants for our armor. For the large pieces, which give the full enchant value, we're going to be using infused multi-effect enchantments, and that is for the headpiece, the chest, and the legs. And for our small pieces, we're going to be using the sturdy trait with once again multi-effect enchantments, which is for your shoulders, your hands, your feet, and your waist. Moving on to the jewelry and weapons. For our jewelry, we're looking at either the trait they drop in, so in this case healthy or robust, but it is also better, if you can afford it, to change over to the tri-stat trait, but once again, not a big deal. When it comes to enchants, I recommend either shield play enchantments or magical recovery enchantments, and the ratio of these that you want, in this instance I've gone for two shield play to one magical recovery, can be changed based on your preference. When it comes to the weapons, we're using defending on both of our single-handed weapons, and for our armor, uh, shield I mean, we're using a multi-effect enchantment with the infused trait. Now we're going to break into a discussion about our set choices. So, why exactly have we gone with what we've picked here? With Chudan, the answer is quite simple. With Sorcerer, they don't really have access to an amazing class ability um, that provides major ward or major resolve, and when you combine that with the fact that Sorcerers already have a tight bar allocation that we'll talk about a bit later, 
I found it much better to actually have this inbuilt into the build so that you save a skill slot, also save some resources on not having to cast an ability to provide you major ward or major resolve, and in addition to that, the one piece and two piece um, outside of the major ward benefit are also quite nice. Moving on to Ebon Armory, this has always been an amazing set for self survivability and also provides your group with a bit more HP, which is especially helpful when they're maximizing their damage, as often that means minimizing their health. And completing our setup, Alkosh is very useful, similar to Ebon, in as much as it supports the group. In this case, shredding resistances of enemies we're fighting to increase our group's DPS. To finish off the discussion, we're now going to look at the trait choices and explain them, as well as also discuss the enchantment choices. With the traits, the reason we use Infused is to just buff up that multi-infect enchantment, and since tanks make great use of all of the stats, that means that having a little bit more is always beneficial. With the smaller pieces, we can't really justify Infused, but what we can justify is Sturdy, as we get the full value of the trait, and with Sorcerer having a little bit of a stamina issue sometimes, Every little helps when it comes to reducing the cost of block. Moving on to the jewelry. Magicka recovery is always good for tanks as having more Magicka allows us to cast more self shields, uh, more group support abilities. And in addition to this, sorcerers also have the added benefit of being able to turn Magicka into stamina. So Magicka recovery is good for that as well. Moving on to shield play enchantments. Once again, similar to sturdy, this is helpful because it reduces the cost of our bash and block, which enables us to have less stamina resource issues. Moving on to our weapons, you can either use the defending trait or the infused trait. For this build I went with defending, and for me the choice isn't that crucial, I since they've nerfed the efficacy of single handed weapon enchants, I think that infused isn't that much of a benefit. And we're not going to be using an ice staff anyways in this build, so we're not going to have that maximum crusher enchant value regardless. For our other single handed weapon, you can either go for a second crusher as I have, as it just allows you a bit more flexibility since we have no damage over time effects applying our debuffs. Alternatively, you can use a weakening enchant, which is going to reduce the damage that the boss is doing to us, and also our allies. As for why we use a crusher enchant, similar to Alkosh, it's excellent to reduce enemy resistances to increase, uh, increase our group DPS. When it comes to the justification behind our shield infused choice, exactly the same as when it comes to our large armor pieces, just getting a little bit extra out of our enchantment value. With that said, this sums up topic number one, and it's time to move into topic number two, which is about talking about the skill usage, and also thinking a little bit about why we're picking the skills that we do. To start off topic number two, let's take a look at our front bar and discuss why we've set it up the way we have. First off, Pierce Armor, an amazing single target taunt which also shreds the resistances of anything we use it on, which is excellent for increasing group damage, a must have. Bone Surge, this is actually an interesting one. If you don't elect for Bone Surge, one of the common options sorcerers can use is Conjured Ward. However, this doesn't affect your allies, and so I think Bone Surge is much nicer, especially in conjunction with the next ability on our bar, as it allows not only for a strong self shield, but also the option for our group to synergize it and help themselves out too. Moving on to the ability after that, Dark Deal. Now Dark Deal is particularly great because it converts our Magicka into Stamina and Health, and as you can see here, 2.2k Magicka invested for 3.6k returned, so it's a resource gain rather than being a resource loss, and I think that's important, especially in a class which can have sustain issues. Also this goes back to our Magicka recovery point, as more Magicka recovery means more casts of this, which in turn allows you to have more stamina. With our next ability, Heroic Slash, we use this ability predominantly for the minor heroism, as more ultimates is always nice, but minor maim is pretty important too, especially for debuffing the damage AoE abilities do, which will hit our uh, allies, especially some that can't actually be avoided. As far as where you can get this ability, you can find it in the one hand and shield line with Pierce Armor. And while we're on the topic of just showing where to find these abilities, very quickly, you can locate Bone Surge in the Undaunted skill line right here. And when it comes to Dark Deal, you just have to go to the Dark Magic. I was on the right one initially, sorry about that. The Dark Deal skill line, that's where you get it from. To finish up our main abilities in the front bar, we have Unstable Clan Fear. This is one of the strongest abilities for Sorcerer right now, and is one of the reasons why I think it has such amazing self-sustain. 
even though the tooltip currently says 16k self heal, in effect you can heal almost your entire HP bar with one press of this if it crits, which is absolutely phenomenal for the low cost Magicka wise. Now of course the downside is it has to use a slot on your front bar and your back bar, but since we're using Chudan we're already saving a slot so it doesn't feel too bad. Let's now finish the front bar discussion by looking at Absorption Field. This is one of the amazing sorcerer specific utility ultimates which can be especially useful in some of the DLC vet dungeons that have come out recently, as if there's periodic ad spawns, having a 12 second stun to just quickly get rid of them and burn them down can be a lifesaver and in Moonhunter Keep as a key example is one of the predominantly used strategies to ensure a speedy and successful run. Let's now move on to our back bar. And you know, something I've realised as I'm recording this is that my front bar is set to number 2 while my back bar is number 1. And yeah, that's getting on my gears a little bit as well. I will be fixing that obviously, but for now, the filming must go on for the video. So, first ability on our back bar. Inner Rage. It's just a ranged taunt, excellent for grabbing enemies that spawn far away, and it can help minimise the movement that we have to do, which in turn is really helpful for group damage. It does have a synergy associated with it, but that's not really that great. And you find that in the Undaunted skill line right here with Bone Surge. Our next ability is Silver Leash. Has a similar reasoning behind the ranged taunt. You just want to be chaining enemies in so they come to you and you can stack them up nicely for your DPS. And that can be found in the Fighter's Guild skill line here. The next two abilities are one of the best parts about sword tanking in my opinion, aside from the Clan Fear. And that's because with the elsewhere changes, immobilizations now have a 3 second cooldown. This is relevant because the 3 seconds lines up with a 3 second stun timing of Streak, which is an amazing AoE stun mechanic which can not only hold enemies in place, but also cancel multiple spell casts that enemies might be doing. Very very helpful and it's similar in some ways to Deep Breath, but personally I like it much better. Now as you can see, and I'll just reiterate it, you stun them for 3 seconds, they have a 7 second immunity to future stuns, at that point you immobilize them for 6 seconds, by the time this is ended, the stun, the stun immunity has ended and they go into a 3 second uh, immobilization immunity. You reapply the stun, 3 seconds goes past, you can then reapply this. Basically it's permanent CC and it feels really really good, trust me. Um, I did show you a bit of gameplay before but I really recommend you trying this out. Um, as I know Bolt Streak isn't that common in PvE, but I really love it. It honestly feels great. And on top of that, you can actually use it to your advantage mobility wise, getting around corners, stacking adds through line of sight, and just generally speaking getting out of trouble. Um, and it really does make up for sorcerers otherwise lack of mobility. So yeah, excellent ability and I recommend getting it. As far as where you pick these two skills up, they're located in the uh, class tree. For streak you just go to storm calling, and when it comes to the other one you just go down here to restraining prison. Um, and actually it just reminded me, the other benefit is Major Vitality, when you combine that with a Clan for Heal, it's an absolutely amazing self heal, um, so you should really be looking to combine that as well where possible. Finally, let's talk quickly about Aggressive Horn. This has been an amazing ability for, well, since it's been in the game, uh, well, what, forever then, uh, for tanks, as being able to maximize your allies' max magicka and stamina, as well as Major Force, is just a great DPS increase. To unlock the Warhorn ability, you have to go to the Alliance War Assault Line skill line, and unfortunately that does mean a bit of PvP, but if you really don't like that, just join a large group there and your AP will slowly tick up until you reach that level in no time. Let's now move into the third and final topic, number 3, which talks about supporting information, which includes some notable abilities and passives, as well as your food buffs and CP tree allocation. It's worth noting though that a lot of this has been contained in the video description, so I'll keep it brief and focus on the main parts. So, first off, let's talk about the food options that we're going to be using and our pot choices. I recommend using the Tri Food uh, here, so that increases your max health, your max magicka and your max stamina. Same reason as the multi-effect enchantments we're using in our armor, we benefit from all of these skills. Uh, skills? What am I talking about? Benefit from all of these resources and so I'd recommend getting that. Also the other benefit of this, very very cheap to buy and it lasts 2 hours. When it comes to potions, we can elect to either use Magicka potions or Stamina potions which are just trash potions that are very cheap to use, but I would, if you have a bit of money, invest into Tristat potions which are excellent once again, restoring all of our stats. 
um, and it has the added benefit um, with us being an Argonian, and I would recommend Argonian, um, and that's actually what we're going to talk about next, because of the racial benefits. So, with that nice segue, let's talk about the racial benefit here. Of all the races currently available, I think Argonian is excellent because of the resource restore on potions, very helpful for sorcerers uh, in combating that resource problem you can run into. And so as you see here, the, the uh, resourceful passive is the one we're talking about. Max Magicka is also nice for ensuring we have a larger pool to accommodate for our Magicka recovery. And the Argonian Resistance and Life Mender tree are both all right for increasing our survivability and self heals. Moving on to the next topic to discuss, it's going to be our Atronach Mundus Stone. Uh, and I realised I meant to say Mundus there, but Atronach Stone, uh, we choose this because it's an excellent way of ensuring our Magicka recovery is increased. And as you can see, without any buffs to this, which we would get from, say, popping a potion, which increases our Magicka recovery by 20%, we're already sitting at above 1000, which is an excellent point for a tank to be at. To finish up the video, let's now talk about the rough CP point allocation. And I say rough intentionally because your CP points will vary based on the content you're doing. Nevertheless, let's talk about the rough guides so that you can at least assign them for general content. First off, I've put 100 points into Blessed and 61 into Elfborn. This is really nice because it increases our clan for heal, and of course one of the main selling points is that one button press entire HP heal that we really want to be going for. Next up, I've invested some points into Master at Arms and Physical Weapons Expert, just to increase the damage we're doing, not super crucial but nice to have a little bit extra. And in a similar way, 49 points into Mighty to increase our physical damage. And it does have the added benefit of giving us some extra weapon crit. Going into the defensive skill line, 61 points into Ironclad just to reduce the damage we take against direct damage, which is very very useful for tanks. You want to ensure it's about this level at all times. And moving into another defensive line, 64 points into Hardy and Ellie Defender, once again reducing that damage incoming, and 28 points into the damage over time effect, um, decrease thick skinned. With this you can change these ratios up a bit depending on how many damage over time effects you're facing in a fight. With the final defensive line, I have 49 points into quick recovery, just to really boost up that clan for heal. I, uh, I guess maybe I'm a little bit more into it than you might be, but it is really honestly in my opinion one of the best self heals in the game. And then I've assigned 4 points into heavy armour, just to save um, the efficacy of our points is obviously, um, or maybe not obviously, but certainly the way the system works is, you have to make sure you go over a whole value. Um, so for example, 10.9 uh, wouldn't be good enough. 11.1 though, you get that 11%. Um, unfortunately, anything past the decimal point isn't accommodated for in the calculations. So keep that part in mind. And now with the final green line, I put 18 points into bashing focus. You bash quite often. And, of course, it's nice to be able to reduce the stamina cost of that bash when you're interrupting key abilities. The next line sees 75 points into Arcanist and 49 into Tenacity. As far as heavy attacking in this build, you will heavy attack at times, so it is nice to have that boost. And with more Magicka Recovery, it goes back to what we talked about in the skill line discussion. More Magicka Recovery means more abilities, generally speaking, with Sorcerer, since more Magicka also means more stamina. And finally, 72 points into Shadow Ward, a really high number here. If we can really minimise that block cost, it just makes it, um, the tank feel way better to play. And 56 into Tumbling. In most content, or I don't know most, but let's just say about half of the content you do, you're not going to be roll dodging that often, but certainly in your uh, content where heavy attacks have to be dodge rolled um, to be efficient with your resources, it is really nice to have a 20% reduction, and I'd highly recommend having something like that at all times. So that's the video over. Yep, you've made it, congratulations. Uh, I try to keep it condensed, but I am mindful of the fact that build videos by their very nature are gonna be a little bit longer than your standard video. If you did enjoy it though, please let me know in the comments or with a like, I really appreciate it and it helps the channel out a lot. Until next time then guys, uh, yeah, take care and I'll see you all very soon.